I gave myself a challenge to learn electronic engineering in 30 days. And <laughs> yeah, that's almost impossible. Anyways, in the past 20 days, I still learned a lot of the basics of Arduino engineering, including different electronic components, sensors, motors, learning how to program all these devices. I also get to experience a few IoT concepts that uses Wi-Fi and cloud database. If you're interested to see that journey, the link to that video will be in description. Now it's time for the big boys. I wanted to create a so-called mini Autobot RC car as a finale to this challenge. This looks simple, but as a beginner of DIY projects and engineering, it took me quite some time to complete this whole project. When I first had this idea to tackle a major project, I always thought what kind of project would last at least 10 days and is not too complicated nor too easy and also something that I could pull off with my current skills and the resources I have at hand. I used to love robots and mechas, so I thought why not create something to rekindle that spark. The trickiest part for me during my 20 day learning binge was motor control. I mean, powering motors just didn't click for me. So I figured why not make a mini car that will help me master motor drivers, a key skill in creating a terminator. As for controlling the car itself, sensors or wireless communication should do the trick. First, I needed a car base and all the components to make this work. My brilliant plan was to reuse some old wood lying around my house for the main base of the car. It was a bit too big and ugly, so I had to cut it down and drill some holes for the motor wires, and also spray painted it to black to make it look slick. Bad me folks, I don't have a workshop, so this process might hurt your eyes. Next up is the engine of the car, the motors and the wheels. Since I have only one DC motor in the original Arduino kit, I had to buy extra motors and wheels, which they coincidentally have a sale going on on Amazon. So very good timing. I tested the motors first to see whether it works, and yeah, it turns out great. I also had to buy an extra L293D motor drivers to control the extra two motors that I have. I visited a local electronics store and holy shit, they sell all kinds of electronic components. Therefore, I do not need to buy it from China, which takes at least one month to ship. However, these motor drivers is not powerful enough to drive these big yellow motors. So I still have to buy it from China. Honestly, I really like this driver more since it can connect four motors at once. But I only managed to get two working. So I did some troubleshooting of my own. Right now, I'm gonna use the, um, what they call the multimeter. It's really cheap. It's just 10 bucks on Amazon. 10 to 20 bucks, I'm not sure, but it's pretty cheap and it's really useful and I think most electronic projects require this kind of multimeters. So basically it just measures voltages and see how much voltage are there. So for example here, um, so let me turn it on first. Let's see where the power supply, I want to test whether there's power supply coming in from here. Okay, so if you see here, so it says there's 3 volts here. And when it's finished, it will go to 0 volts. So if it's powering on, it will go to 3 volts. So this is where the power supply comes from. So right now you see there's 7.7 .7 volts. And if you use it up, as you can see, it uses around 3 volts. And then once it stops, it gets back to 7.6 volts back. So this is the power from the battery. So once it uses, it goes to 5 volts. So let's test this one to see whether it is it has any power in it. Okay, so as you can see, there's no power going into this, um, supplying to these motors. That's why it's not working. Okay, so now we know that's the root of the problem. The mistake is from the software part. After changing some pinout values, it finally works. Yep. As you can see, both of them are working right now. This side is working, moving, and this side is moving. Done! Now it's time for wireless remote control. Here we have our radio frequency module, which consists of a transmitter and a receiver. This connection is really simple, but you need to actually power 
um, two Arduino devices, so you need to have two of them. So I use one of them is my Arduino Nano, one of them is my Mega. So this is my ultimate remote control. Only this part though, please ignore the rest since it is my experiment when I'm waiting for my components to arrive from China. The part where I have difficulties is when I want to send two signals simultaneously to the receiver. Sending one signal is really easy. But as you can see, when I send two signals, one other signal will be distorted and have random symbols. I couldn't figure it out on my own, so I go to Reddit, which is the electronic subreddit, to ask my questions. And fortunately, one of them is able to help me, and I solve it just by using his suggestion. Okay, so I've already uploaded the code, and let's test whether it works. It should, it should work. So I uploaded the code to control it, if I switch just the x-axis, so if I go like this, it should work. <laughs> it, it takes time though, so it, it receives a bit slowly, so if I go right, the other one should go. Yeah, you see clearly? So if I, I, I go left here, it takes a while, but... We did it! Right now, let's put on some wheels. Well, turns out, the hardest part of this challenge is to put on the wheels. Anyways, after I put on the wheels, I just glue it back on. And with this, my mini Autobot Transformer car has been done. I know it's quite messy, but since this is a prototype, I'm going to reuse some components later. I don't want everything to be in place yet. Notice when I lift my car up, it is able to move freely, but once I place it down on my table, it no longer is able to move forward. That's because I do not have enough power supply. I'm currently using a 9 volt battery, which doesn't give enough power to the motor driver to drive the wheels forward. So I added extra batteries. Just a note for some of you, connecting AAA batteries in series with 9 volt battery is not a good idea. Ideally, you want it all to have the same kind of battery. For example, everything is just triple A batteries. Oh, make sure you don't accidentally short circuit your battery. Since it will leak some toxic chemicals, these liquids are odorless, colorless, and once you touch it, it hurts like hell. Personal experience, by the way. So make sure you don't sh accidentally short circuit your batteries. Always take it out from the battery pack. As you can see, my robot is finally able to move forward and backwards. I was really happy and it reminded me of that time that I first touched LEGO robots and I programmed it to move forward. It's still stuck in my head till today. Overall, I'm really glad that I picked this project because it looks simple but it's definitely not easy to do it from scratch. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it go left or right within this 30 day challenge time frame, probably due to its overall structure and power, but that just shows how much unexpected things you will face in engineering. I've learned so much about the essence of engineering and it's just amazing how far technology has come since the industrial revolution. Seriously, we've created computers, machines, and now even AI. All these insane technologies just from minerals, rocks, and stones. Engineering is always evolving and changing. And even if you are slightly intrigued, I'll say go for it and learn as much as you can possibly can. This is JJ from Budget Zero. I hope to see you in another video. Budget Zero, peace.